Hey there, Jeep Divers. You're ready to unpack the history of Christmas because you asked for it. And let me tell you, this isn't just about tinsel and gingerbread. We're going deep on how this holiday evolved from ancient festivals to the global phenomenon we know today. What's fascinating is that Christmas, for all its modern trappings, is really a story of cultural evolution. It's like a tree with roots that stretch back thousands of years. Okay, so no baby Jesus in a manger just yet. Let's rewind to those ancient roots. Where do we even begin? Long before Christmas trees and carols, people were already celebrating in the heart of winter. Think about it, shortest days, longest nights. These ancient cultures were craving light, warmth, and hope. Makes sense right when things are dark? Literally and figuratively, you look for something to celebrate a reason to believe things will get better. Exactly, and these weren't just quiet little gatherings. Take the Roman festival of Saturnalia, for example, for an entire week leading up to December 25th. They basically hit the pause button on everyday life, huge <laughs> feasts, exchanging gifts, gambling. They even temporarily flipped their social hierarchy upside down. Boy, slaves as masters, that's one way to celebrate. So it was about more than just the changing seasons. They were shaking things up a bit too. It was like a pressure valve for their society. Saturnalia let them celebrate excess, bend the rules, and revel in a world turned upside down. And you see these themes of renewal and social upheaval pop up again and again throughout the history of Christmas. Okay, now I'm really seeing those historical threads you mentioned, but we can't forget about Mithras wasn't his birthday also on December 25th. Oh, that's right. Mithraism was this mystery religion popular in the Roman Empire, especially among soldiers. And their celebration of Mithras's birth, well, let's just say it shared some striking similarities with later Christmas traditions. Coincidence. I think not. It's like December 25th was destined to be a holiday. Right. So we've got the Romans, we've got the mystery cults. But what about those frosty northern cultures? Weren't they celebrating in the middle of winter too? Absolutely. The Norse had Yule, a midwinter festival, with bonfires, feasts, and gifts to honor the gods, particularly Odin. Okay, now this is where it gets really interesting. Odin the Norse god who rides an eight-legged flying horse, or are we about to make a Santa connection here? Let's just say the imagery is strikingly familiar, isn't it? A jolly figure flying through the air in the dead of winter to deliver gifts and good cheer. It makes you wonder if those ancient myths found their way into our modern Christmas traditions. My mind is already blown and we haven't even gotten to the actual Christmas story. So how did we get from pagan parties and Norse mythology to the birth of Jesus. Well, that's where things get really interesting because in those very early days, Christmas wasn't a major celebration for Christians at all. Their focus was on Easter, the resurrection of Christ. So how does this relatively new religion in Christianity navigate these deeply ingrained winter festivals? So early Christians were all about Easter, not eggnog and carols, but those winter festivals we talked about, they weren't going anywhere, were they? Exactly. And this is where the early church made a really savvy move. Instead of trying to stamp out these deeply rooted traditions, they decided to adapt and adopt. Kind of brilliant when you think about it. Why fight against something so popular? It's like trying to cancel fun in the middle of winter. Precisely. They recognized the power of these existing celebrations, these long nights filled with light and hope. And slowly but surely, they began to weave the Christian message into the fabric of these ancient festivals. Okay, but why December 25th? I mean, we've already got Saturnalia Mithra's birthday. It's a busy time of year. It was a strategic choice. Think about it. The Roman festival of Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun god that also fell around December 25th. It was a celebration of light overcoming darkness. And what better symbol for Jesus than as the light of the world, right? Coming at the time when the days literally start getting longer after the winter solstice. Exactly. It's about hope renewal. The promise of salvation themes that resonated deeply with both pagans and new converts to Christianity by aligning the birth of Jesus with these existing festivals, they created a powerful message that could speak to a wider audience. It's like taking a familiar song and giving it a remix for a whole new generation. But even with this new Christmas celebration on December 25th, things weren't totally unified across the board, were they? You're right. While the Western Church embraced December 25th, many Eastern Christians continued to celebrate Epiphany on January 6th as their main holiday. Epiphany, the arrival of the wise men bearing gifts, still a huge deal for Eastern Christian traditions to this day. It's a great reminder that even within Christianity, there are diverse ways of celebrating and honoring these sacred events, different dates, different traditions, but that same spirit of joy generosity and hope. Okay, so we've got Christmas officially on the calendar, but I have a feeling things are about to get a whole lot more interesting from what I've heard those medieval folks knew how to throw a party Christmas or otherwise. Let's just say that Christmas in the Middle Ages was a far cry from the quiet contemplative holiday. It's often portrayed as today, 
Think less silent night, more like a medieval feast with a side of mischief. All right, deep divers. Yeah. Let's journey back to the Middle Ages. We're talking Christmas with a medieval twist, less about caroling and more about, well, maybe a touch of chaos. What can you tell us about this era? Think of it this way. After months of toiling in the fields and following strict social rules, Christmas in the Middle Ages was a time to really let loose. We're talking massive feasts that could last for days, with everyone from nobles to peasants joining in the revelry. So basically, the entire Middle Ages used Christmas as an excuse to throw a giant no hold barred party. It wasn't just about the party atmosphere. This was a society with a rigid social structure, and Christmas offered a chance to upend those norms to embrace a little bit of chaos. Remember the Lord of Misrule we talked about earlier? Oh yeah, the king or queen of chaos chosen to turn the social order upside down. It's fascinating how this tradition seems to tap into something universal mm. that human need to even for a little while, turn things upside down. Exactly. The Lord of Misrule encouraged revelry pranks and a healthy dose of disobedience, all in the spirit of the season, of course. It was a way to blow off steam and embrace the absurdity of it all. That definitely puts those awkward office Christmas parties into perspective. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't all fun and games, right? Didn't Christmas run into some trouble during this era? You're thinking of the Puritans, they saw Christmas as being a little too much fun, too focused on earthly pleasures and not enough on religious devotion. In the 17th century, they actually tried to ban Christmas in England. Wait, seriously, they outlawed Christmas. Talk about a holiday buzzkill. They were serious. They saw those medieval traditions of feasting, drinking, and merrymaking as distractions from religious reflection. Shops were shuttered, decorations were forbidden, and there were even accounts of soldiers being sent to confiscate Christmas food. Wow, that's some next-level Grinch behavior. But Dog. it's pretty clear their efforts didn't exactly work in the long run. Thankfully, not when the monarchy was restored, so was Christmas, and it came back with a vengeance. But the Puritan influence lingered, especially in parts of America, where some communities continued to resist Christmas celebrations for centuries. It's wild to think that something as ubiquitous as Christmas was actually banned at one point, but the holiday clearly has some serious staying power. So how do we get from medieval feasts and Puritan bands to the Christmas we know today? I have a feeling the Victorians had something to do with it. You're right on the money. The Victorians, particularly Queen Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert, really embraced Christmas and reshaped it into a more family-friendly, sentimental holiday. Think cozy fires carols and those iconic Christmas cards we still send today. And Prince Albert, he's the one we have to thank for Christmas trees becoming all the rage, right? Absolutely. Right. Well, Christmas trees had existed in Germany for centuries. It was Albert who popularized them in England. And when an illustration of the royal family gathered around their beautifully decorated tree was published, well, it was like the Victorian version of going viral. <laughs> ah, the power of a royal photo op. It seems like that's always been a thing. But the Victorians brought more than just Christmas trees to the party. They also had Charles Dickens and his iconic story, A Christmas Carol, that had to have a huge impact on how people viewed the holiday. Absolutely. Dickens captured the spirit of the Victorian era with his story of redemption and generosity, Scrooge's transformation from a miserly grump to a benevolent benefactor resonated deeply with people. It's amazing to think about how influential the Victorian era still is to our modern Christmas. But we can't forget about the 20th century. That's when Christmas really went global. Exactly. With the rise of mass media advertising and global trade, Christmas exploded into a worldwide phenomenon. From Coca-Cola's iconic Santa Claus imagery to the rise of department store, Santa's Christmas became big business. And of course, we can't forget all those Christmas conspiracies that pop up every year. Did Coca-Cola really invent Santa's Christmas, just a pagan holiday in disguise? Seems like everyone has a theory. Don't worry, we'll unpack those two. We'll separate fact from fiction, explore how this holiday became a commercial powerhouse, and maybe even debunk a few myths along the way. From ancient festivals to Puritan crackdowns, Victorian makeovers, and 21st century consumerism, who knew Christmas had such a wild and unexpected history. It's been quite a journey. It really has. And as we head into the holiday season, it's fascinating to think about how all these threads, these ancient rituals and traditions, are still woven into the fabric of Christmas today. It makes you think with a history as rich and complex as this, what will Christmas look like in another hundred years? What new traditions will emerge? And how will this ever evolving holiday continue to reflect who we are and what we value? Those are definitely some things to ponder as you hang those stockings and string those lights this year. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the fascinating and often surprising history of Christmas.